This is WWE superstar Drew McIntyre, and you're listening to the WWE Podcast. The one that everybody wants, me. Says I just your ass. This is my You're gonna acknowledge me. Hey guys, welcome to the WWE podcast for this Saturday, February 18th. I wasn't gonna come on here tonight. I really wasn't. It's really late. I'm really tired. I'm sleep deprived as it is. But given the outcome of the main event of the elimination chamber and and I was laying in bed watching it and and you know trying to stay awake at times but I, I saw the ending and uh, I just I need to come on I I feel so emotionally attached to this match as many of you do and many of you in Montreal and I'll be doing a full review on the elimination chamber tomorrow with a person uh, that hasn't been on the show before but attended in in house was there in the Bell Center in Montreal so a full complete recap is coming tomorrow this is not the purpose of this podcast this is kind of like a quick review rather a quick reaction specifically to roman reigns and Sami Zayn. okay because the rest of the matches i i I don't want to dive into there were some really good moments some great moments some really fun unexpected moments Uh, the crowd was hot all night you know we'll we'll dive into that with our on-site correspondent that'll be joining us tomorrow afternoon sunday afternoon is when you'll be getting that full review by the way and okay let's let's get into it though okay so full review is coming tomorrow but I needed to come on here and vent. I needed an outlet, and that, thank God I have it. Sami Zayn loses. And, you know, while many of us in our hearts wanted and believed Sami could do it, in our minds, I think we all kind of knew that bigger picture is what WWE was looking at. And that's clearly what they were looking at here with Roman Reigns retaining. And that doesn't mean Sami can't still be a part of the main event of WrestleMania. There's that triple threat is I think very much still alive. That is it's in the cards and we'll have to see on follow up where everything leads. You know, like the follow up is going to be key. Does 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 uh Sammy continue to focus on Roman or does his focus shift to the Usos for the inevitable tag team match that he's going to have with KO? I mean, that match can actually happen on SmackDown. You know, like Roman, or rather, uh, KO and Sammy versus the Usos could happen on SmackDown. It could happen on the SmackDown WrestleMania. Don't forget, that's the what they call it, the the SmackDown before WrestleMania. But let me just say uh, first about the match before I start to dump on it is crowd was unbelievable, even better than advertised. Hats off to those in Montreal who had a lot of four letter words to say to Roman. Uh, very active all night. You guys didn't lose your energy somehow. I have no idea how you didn't lose your energy. You were, uh, I mean, it was, it was, I think, even hotter than CM Punk and John Cena at Money in the Bank 2011. It was unbelievable. I even give props to Sami Zayn's wife, who looked very believable in her emotions, and I think there was a lot of real emotions there. So hats off to her. It's, you know, a lot of times the third-party involvement can be hokey, this was not, and Sammy genuinely seemed happy. Roman at times at the beginning of the uh, the match, smiling at Sammy seemed like a genuine smile, like he's happy for him. Of course, that's not how they play it on TV, but that's to me how it came across genuinely. And the pacing of the match was awesome. And it showed you why you don't have to have a hundred mile an hour spot fest to get the crowd to, to go say, this is awesome. The pacing of this match was beautiful brilliant it was spot on and yes there were some high spots if you want to call them that that when they were done meant something instead of just a transition to the next thing which is i think a a fatal flaw in a lot of today's pro wrestling is just you know next move biggest move let's go 100 miles an hour gotta get my crap in boom 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 bing bomb boom right no this was a story told by both guys, the announcers had time to talk about what each move meant. When was the last time as they started the match, 
after they finally did, which felt like it took forever, that you saw a headlock get a reaction. Go back and listen. A headlock got a reaction from the crowd. That's how amped they were. It was amazing. And you know, as the match progressed, there were some great spots. Sammy getting caught up, unfortunately, in the, the uh, ropes on the outside where he can, does the in-between rope dive. He got himself caught and scratched himself up you know, right on his midsection. It, it's fine. I'm not just, just an observation. It's a high risk move. And I don't know how he, you know, that, that move should fail more often than it succeeds. I'll just say that. Uh, and, uh, that, I mean, that was the only blooper, if you will, but that's fine with me. But the rest of this was just brilliantly laid out from Roman talking trash to his wife. And then Sammy getting time in front of his wife to beat down Roman and Roman trying to play the victim that he only wanted them to be united. And I gave you everything. And this is how you treat me. The off-camera mic stuff was great. Paul Heyman, by the way, also. somebody We should just have, every time Paul Heyman's at ringside for a match, can we just have a hard cam on him at all times so that you can do like a picture-in-picture picture of the match as it's going on to see Paul Heyman's facial reactions? He's brilliant. I mean, I was watching Paul Heyman most of the time, too. I mean, the match was great, but I was trying to keep an eye on Paul Heyman uh, because he's just so comical with how he does stuff and says stuff and reacts, overreacts, and underreacts. Like, it's just great. I love Paul Heyman's facials during a, a match, and this was no different, certainly. So uh, that's my request to WWE. Keep a hard cam on Paul Heyman at all times so we can do picture-in-picture. Picture. Um, but that said... That all said, the match had some really believable spots with with uh, with Sammy possibly winning the Haluva kick, the Superman punch he pulled out, and then the Haluva kick, the second Haluva kick with the ref down, uh, you know that kind of thing. And where, where's WWE's management? To, I mean, if you're in charge of a high stakes matchup, how do you not have a referee at the ready, right? <laughs> but uh, I mean, that's just pro wrestling. Having Paul Heyman, well, we'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, Having, of course, Jimmy come out and super kicked Sami Zayn, I think, three times, hit him with the splash, and uh, Roman got a two count. That led to Sami eventually hitting a kick on on, on Jimmy, and uh, that's when Paul Heyman gave him gave Roman Reigns the chair and commenced the beat down and the spear. And the victory. And it's like, okay, that's it. I mean, like I say that's it as if the match wasn't really good. The match was very good in terms of, again, the pacing was, it, it allowed you to digest what the hell is going on. Yes, it took forever for them to get to the ring. It took forever for them to get to the matchup itself. The chants were off the, off the charts, all that. They were taking it in, I understand. The match was brilliantly paced. Brilliantly. And I can't say enough about that. The ending was Sammy. He kicked out of a spear before, you know, but this obviously was the one that put him down after the chair shots. And Jay, by the way, did show up as Roman was going to beat down Sammy and stood in between them. Roman gave Jay the chair the same way he gave Sammy the chair at the Rumble. Jay was conflicted, didn't do anything and left. So we still don't know where Jay lands on this whole thing and where his loyalties lie he protected Sammy, but also didn't attack Roman. Still is the wild card in this whole thing. People seem to be very excited to see Jay. And as Roman is beating down Sammy, though, at the end of the match, here's the biggest problem I have. Sammy losing is a disappointment, no doubt about it. But here's my... Look, where the F is Kevin Owens? Where, where is Kevin? And the worst part about this was, after the match is over... He comes out. It's like, bro, you come out now? You know, I'm surprised the crowd didn't boo him. I mean, it's like, you're kidding me. So what exactly were you doing behind, you know, and just sitting in gorilla watching the match and just saying, eh, well, whatever happens, happens, and then I'll come out. Well, if you have such a gripe with the bloodline, wouldn't evening the odds be the best way to get revenge? Instead of allowing them to do what they've done the last three years. I don't understand this. If I was Sami Zayn, I'd be pissed. Sure, he saved you from, you know, annihilation of, of a beatdown as always. But 
the most important part of this was he could have helped you even the odds and potentially win the championship. Where the hell was Kevin Owens? I, 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 I'm just, I'm befuddled. Like, what the hell is Kevin Owens doing? I understand. He hit a stunner on, on Roman. Great. Hit a stunner on uh, Jimmy. Great. Hit a stunner even on Paul Heyman as Paul Heyman did his hilarious, you know, trying to attack Kevin Owens from behind, which was, I mean, it was almost just cartoonish, but he, even uh, Heyman got a stunner. Fine. And I guess that was their mechanism to try to thwart off any booing or potential actual rioting uh, or, or, you know, just kind of the crowd absolutely losing their, their crap. That was their method of deodorizing their decision was to, well, Kevin's going to come in and stun everybody. Well, the crowd did cheer. And I mean, so they were happy to see that, but it's very superficial. It didn't mitigate the problem of Sammy. And here's the thing is I, I do believe WWE will regret the day that they did not decide to put the belt on, on Sammy here. Now I understand the temptation. I understand why they did it. It's not like I'm sitting here pretending that I don't understand. This makes no sense. It does make sense from their perspective of this. Roman is six weeks from mania. He, you, you know, their perspective is why would you have their, their 900 plus day champion lose the pay-per-view before the biggest show of the year and not be in the biggest main event of the year. It doesn't make sense, right? From a marketing name, brand value, all this you know, pure star power. Sami Zayn is not on the same level as Roman. It's just, he's just not. That's a fact, you know, and, and the thousand days it's coming folks. I have told you that they will sacrifice any and everything on the altar of this thousand days. And they are proving it right. Every step of the way. Now, I don't think it's solely at the altar of a thousand days. I think there are, again, there's WrestleMania in the way, which, you know, you, you look at and go, well, <laughs> that's the problem for Sammy. They don't want Sammy in the main event of WrestleMania over Roman. And now they are going to be tasked with starting a program from scratch with Cody and have the fans have six weeks to pretend not to care about Sammy's loss anymore and get as emotionally invested in Cody as they were with Sammy. Good luck with that. You know, like the fans do like Cody, but they like him in a different way. They don't feel as deeply for Cody as they do for Sammy. And if, if, if you know, anyone wants to ask me, how do I know that? Oh, gee, I don't know because I'm a fan. I'm the one you're marketing to. And I'm the one that understands. And I think I speak for some, not all that I understand what's going on here from a psychological perspective. They can live in their bubble and try to feel like, well, listen to the crowd reaction. That is going to fade. Sammy is, is a organically beloved character. Cody took six years off from WWE and fans are just happy to see him back. And Oh, cool. You know, he won the rumble logo. You know, he's great. He's good on promos and you know, he's doing it for his dad. That all sounds fun. You know, like we were genuinely, you know, we're cool. We're, we're glad to see Cody back. But the love and connection with Sammy is deeper. And if they want to test that and have Sammy out of the main event of WrestleMania and put Cody Rhodes in there one on one with Roman, nobody else. And it's just Sammy and Kevin versus the Usos. There's going to be hell to pay from a crowd reaction standpoint at WrestleMania. Because Cody can cut all the good promos he wants and he will make headway. He is talented. There's no doubt. And the crowd, I think, will still support him largely. But I think there'll be a trend. There'll be a trend as we get closer and closer to WrestleMania if it's clear that the WWE's plan is to not include Sammy in the main event, that there will start to be an uprising. One that could force WWE's hand like they did at WrestleMania 30, sticking Daniel Bryan in the main event could. I don't, I don't know. Again, I, we didn't get all the answers tonight, but we got, we got 
a good amount. We got a good, you know, good uh, a good helping of answers, and we still don't know. Again, what's the final main event? Where does Jay stand? What about Kevin? Right? There's still some floaters out there. Now, my theory of the Dark Horse of the Rock obviously didn't come to pass. It's fine. Didn't expect it, but I just kind of put it out there. I just wanted to come on here again. A full review is coming with everything else and on-site correspondent, actually patron of the show as well. You'll hear him tomorrow, uh, tomorrow afternoon. Again, we'll be dropping the show probably mid afternoon, Eastern standard time tomorrow. So keep an eye, a ear out really for that. Now I, I, I want to, I, I'm very mixed on this match though, because I really enjoyed it so much. I have not felt that emotionally invested in a character, in a match maybe since Daniel Bryan or maybe before that the emotion was just contagious and you understood it. It was easy to understand. Sammy still hasn't really fleshed out that promo of why exactly he turned and all that. He still hasn't done that. We all just kind of, you know, what's the word? We just infer. That's the word. I think uh, his actions to a promo, right? Of understanding why he did what he did. But the last thing I'll say, and then I'll uh, wait till tomorrow for a full review, is the argument for Sammy winning here. If you're not going to have him main event WrestleMania, if you're not going to. The argument for him winning, though, it's in Montreal, of course. I know it's only one city. But you you create that, that fairy, fairy tale ending. You know, you... You have an underdog from the underground, as he was once known before he became the master strategist and the conspiracy theorist and all that. And then, of course, Sammy, uh, Sammy Uso. Um, you know, you have a guy beloved. Fans felt some many, and I shouldn't say all, but many felt that he was underutilized for years. And he comes in there and gets involved in a story that takes off in a way that I don't think anyone expected to this, this level gets to a perfect peak moment of his career in his hometown, in front of his family. Crowd is beyond white hot. And you have a champion that's been there for 900 days. Tell me exactly, WWE, when you're going to find a more perfect and suitable candidate to beat Roman in order for them to utilize that victory to take their career to the next level. Tell me who that is on the roster right now. Tell me who would get a bigger reaction, is more organically beloved, not just because you tell us to, like with Cody. And the fans respect deeply and connect with. Tell me exactly who that person is right now. If you're planning on having Roman drop the belt, wouldn't Sammy fit that bill to a T? Isn't that the kind of guy you would want to be the one to, to, to defeat Roman? It, no? You think Cody's going to do that, really? Cody Rhodes now needs to be very concerned about f- challenging Roman Reigns. And WWE needs to continue to be very careful. Very careful the way they book this. If, if they are trying to just shoehorn Cody into the spot that many fans believe Sammy deserves and Sammy is out of the main event if he is. Again, we don't have the final card. This is just speculation so far. Um, yeah, and, and I got to say, it fe- <laughs> there, there are so many wild theories throw, being thrown out there for so many different rumble entrances and surprise returns, and this is going to happen. I think it's time that we tamper down our expectations of surprises. And big returns. I really do. Because I've been burned, as others have, so many times lately. Especially with this story of this person's returning. That's going to happen. This is going to happen. They'll swerve us here. And it seems to just kind of be like they don't even hear the noise. And they're just going forward with whatever the hell they wanted to do. Uh, So I'm going to start dialing back my expectations. (laughs) As far as those kinds of big moments. And my God, they may actually have to give the Sammy the belt here. How can they not? And instead it's like, Oh, well, yeah, I guess Roman's still champion. Right. So uh, again, the biggest gripe I had is Kevin Owens. Like, 
wh- what? And yes, it could have been and should have been Sammy's moment. But I'm going to leave it there, guys. So much more to say. So much more to dissect. I can't wait to hear the in-person perspective, as you will hear tomorrow with our correspondent and patron. And you'll hear, again, a full review, especially the men's Elimination Chamber match, the women's Edge and Beth Phoenix versus Judgment Day and Dominic Mysterio, all of that. So we've got a lot to cover tomorrow. I'm looking forward to it. I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your night. And I will talk to you soon. Thanks for listening to the WWE Podcast. Don't forget to subscribe on your favorite podcast app so you don't miss a show. Or head to wwepodcast.com. And for all of these shows ad-free, head over to patreon.com slash WWE Podcast. Until then, we'll see you next time.